I don't have to ask. I'm assuming everybody in this room is going to be there, and you're going to bring 10 friends. So we're looking forward to having an absolutely rocking time out there. Uh, hey, golf hosts the uh, Hard Rock Invitational in a couple of weeks out at Arrowhead Country Club. That'll be October 1st and 2nd. So anybody who's interested in coming out and watching, you're very invited to do so. Uh, cross Country will be at the Black Hill State Day Little Meet on Saturday, September 21st. Soccer is home this Friday in Sioux Park, and they play Colorado Mines at 6 o'clock. Then they'll be on the road uh, Sunday for Regis. Volleyball is on the road this weekend. They're at Pueblo on Friday and at New Mexico Highlands on Saturday. So there's a logistical trip for you. That's going to be uh, a nice road trip for them. And then as we know, as I've already mentioned, football's at home this Saturday versus Simon Fraser University. Once again, kickoff is at 5 o'clock. Uh, if you don't already know this, all our games are on Fox Sports Radio. That's 11.50 a.m. or 106.7 f.m. And you can always uh, watch and listen to the games through our website, GoRockers.com, through the live stream uh, stretch internet. So please feel free to do that as well. Now we're going we're gonna to actually flip things around a little bit here. Coach Tinker needs to speak first. He's got some logistical things going on today. So we're going to bring Coach Tinker up first to tell us all the good stuff that happened this past weekend. So Coach Tinker, come on up. How's everybody doing? Good juice level out there? Uh, you know, I know that that's, a, that's very, very important. Uh, this past Saturday, we actually spent Friday night cutting up some oranges from Sam's Club and had a little extra, uh, some orange slices at halftime to make sure we got rejuiced for the second half and it paid off with the victory. You know, one of the things we talk about is, is getting the games in the R back into the fourth quarter. We've done that two weeks in a row. We've got both our mag games into the fourth quarter where it's competitive, where we have the lead. And uh, now we're one for two. And we got to do it again here as we get going. But finally getting one in the fourth quarter, being at home. And, and there's no question that if you really look at the, the story between the two games, uh, when you're at home, uh, you have a better chance of winning in the fourth quarter because you got your home fans, your home energy, the right juice level. We were able to do that with some really exciting football near the end and, and got the victory, which was a hard-fought victory against a really strong opponent from Western State. I know Bradley has some highlights from the game Saturday, so let's get to them. I know most of you were there and got to see them, uh, but here's the, uh, the highlights from our game against Western State, a solid win. Uh, for the Hard Rockers. This is uh, early in the game. This is the very first turnover. We did end up turning them over six different times. This is the first one. Uh, Keontae Christian, I believe, got the strip and, and uh, or, or the recovery, rather. I believe Justin Brokemeyer might have gotten the strip on that one. It was a little bit hard to tell on Phil, but really, really important play in the game. And here's the next one. This is Adrian Eastman, number 21, coming out of Rankin. Uh, and, and getting the forced fumble. A big time hit and got the recovery right there. That led to the first uh, touchdown for the Hard Rockers. Uh, again, we did a much, much, much better job Saturday of turning uh, the turnovers of our opponent into points for the Hard Rockers. This is Jake Sullivan right here. Finds a big Joe Lubbers in the middle of the field. Joe's a redshirt freshman of 18. He's easy to find. He's like 6'5", so he's easy to find. This, is a, this catch by Isaiah is one of the, the best ones I've seen in a while. But that, was a, that was a nice play. Uh, tremendous job and got us on the board and then we come right back and I thought it created a bunch of momentum at this point in the second quarter. Our first quarter offensively uh, I've decided to, to, to burn and, and get rid of but uh, after that we were playing some decent football. Here's Connor Janovey. This is the play that happened to us the week before. Look at this toe touch play on the sideline to recover the ball. Really difficult play to be made and a ton of juice right there and a huge play for us and it led to this one. Another really nice catch. This time it's Carson Hunt out of Arvada, Colorado, sophomore. And it's hard to see on film, but another nice toe touch catch. Got the job done and, and uh, put us in front. This is the block kick by Dominic Jackson. I mean, that was such an exciting play at the end of the half. One of the plays that really spearheaded us and, and gave us good juice going into halftime uh, with a nice five point cushion. This is Quentin Starks' catch along the sideline. Quentin's a true freshman out of San Antonio. That was a third and seven play, and that kept the drive alive and led to this touchdown run by Connor Silvera. I told him, I said, I might have been able to score on that one. <laughs> now, other plays where Connor scores on, I would not have been able to score on. This is another time where we take the ball away. It's Dom Jackson again, so he had the blocked kick, and then this interception uh, set us up for another score and got us in good position. It was a big-time play by Dom. 
And then here's the big run by Connor, the, the play that really busted the, the gates at the end of the game. Uh, great job up front. A little bit of a struggle running the ball early in the game and finally got it figured out as we went along at the three minute mark, made the big one. Here's the play of the week. Mark and Vilson, number two, he's in the building today. He's going to get the interception and he's going to go all the way. We're going to work on his high and tight a little bit, but he did finish. We ran out of gas here at the end, but he got himself into the end zone with uh, one of the first pick sixes we've had in a while. It was a super exciting moment. Uh, the juice was overflowing on the sideline after that play by Markin. Just an exceptional play. And then uh, I guess they're going to show us kind of taking the knee and, and uh, you know, congratulating ourselves on the victory, but an exciting afternoon of football uh, at Dunham Field. So, um, again, the story of the game is really what happened in the turnover battle. We were able to defensively take it away five different or off, uh, defensively four different times. And in the kicking game twice, the blocked kick and then the fumble recovery you saw, or not the fumble, but the kickoff that we recovered. Then we forced a fumble, uh, and, or two fumbles rather, and had the two interceptions that you saw. So that's a football game. When we talk about winning football, we talk about owning the football, and we were able to do that. All right? The next portion is a, an exciting portion for me because uh, I get to, to walk away a little bit and let this guy take over. Uh, very, very capable hands, and we're going to put the luncheon in, into Mark and Wilson's hands. Uh, Mark is a junior from Belvedere, Florida, came to us a year ago, had a really strong season in his first year. Uh, he was the Lunch Pail Defense Player of the Week this week, and the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference also named him the Defensive Player of the Week for his performance against Western State. It was an outstanding performance. Uh, was able to get his hand on the football a couple of times and make some big plays. And uh, very, very excited for Mark. And he ended up with two at the end of the game. It was really exciting. Uh, and a really, really exciting moment for him and, and for our program uh, to get the nod as the RMAC Player of the Week. So without further ado, uh, the man of the hour, the guy who got all the accolades, he's your quarterback, number two, Mark and Wilson. <laughs>
questions? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, I see you're from Florida. You, you were the number two. You had a certain favorite football player from back in the day that wore number two. Yeah, Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you kind of might be on Saturday. That was fun. Should have high set. We should have. <laughs> No joke to say that it was rocking. It was one unbelievable environment. We had a huge number of people in both matches and uh, did fantastically. So, Coach Lauren Ford, will you please come up and tell us about it? Midwestern State, who is a fantastic team out of Texas, and Newman, who is out of Kansas, both teams who are bigger and more athletic than we were at that moment. So uh, those are two big wins for us. And because of our efforts in those um, in those matches, Tana Dahlberg, who was our libero, which is a sophomore libero, and Dana Thompson, who was our freshman outside hitter, were named to the all-tournament team. So that's what that's a special moment for them. So. Um, Going into this now past weekend, we did our, had our first RMAC games. So um, we played Dixie State on Friday night. They're new to the RMAC. Not, we really don't know much about them. We know that they're good, but they showed us just how good they were. Um, you want to talk about juice level? They, our fans were like 15 out of 10. Our team was like negative 5 out of 10. So we really owe it to our environment for doing a great job for us. Our, I didn't even know we had pet bands. In case you didn't know we had pet bands. Um, they were phenomenal. They did a great job. Our uh, bands were through the roof, unfortunately. First home match, playing against great competition, we just kind of got a little scared and did not play well. So um, going into Saturday, we competed against Westminster, who previously had beaten Black Hills the night before. So we knew that we were kind of going to yeah, like that. A challenge and played really well. And I don't know where my clicker is. Sorry, I didn't know So these are some highlights against Westminster. Um, something really positive is we really served this team off the court. We made them feel very uncomfortable, and they were unable to do a lot of things. And you can tell by uh, just mostly these what is just how much Dana means a lot to us and how big time she is with um, a lot of plays that she ends. But you can see that we serve them off the court for the entire game. And again, last time I talked to you, we talked about our weakness being server pass, and that was not the case this weekend. That was our biggest strength. We passed better than our, team, our opponents, and we served better than our opponents. So that's 
pretty much how you would go on the news is serve and pass. So we did a great job with that. Um, and we really saw a lot of great things in some new lineups that we were trying and you know, it was fun to watch. We are currently running a 6-2 with Ali Boggs and Cheyenne Bastion. Running a 6-2 means that we have two setters that split the duties. So it's been great to see them kind of step up and work great together. And it allowed us to have Cheyenne be a great offensive option, which she is a great offensive option. She's not a freshman for us, so that's a big time. But this was a big win for us. So I mean, this team kind of handed a, a loss to Black Hills, and we knew we were going to go for some toughness, but we did our job. Uh, we won the first set pretty handily. In the second set, we were down 9 to 17. And somehow won, 25 to 23. But I say somehow, but we know why we won. You know, we, we just got it together and we served tougher and we communicated and we got it together. So that was incredibly impressive for me that this team could come back from a 9-17 deficit and come back and win. And you'll see Diana serving up a nice ace here. Which is something she's getting to do. So that was a very big win for us. Um, I've said that a lot, but it's, it's a very big win for us. And we now move on to um, Pueblo and New Mexico Highlands. We are currently sitting eighth in the art map. New Mexico Highlands is seventh, Pueblo is 11th. So, um, you know, we have a lot to do. We know that they're both tough teams, but I think we're very similar. And I think if we come out, we serve and pass well, and our lineup stays consistent, and if those people can really deliver those things to us, then we'll do a good job. You know, against uh, Westminster, our team hit 252 which, if you know anything about baseball, volleyball, that's very good. Um, if we can do that, if we can serve pass well, we'll win a lot more games. And in that match against Westminster, Dana had 15 ki kills, which still puts her at the top of the RMAC and second in the country in kills. Um, Anna Bright and Karen Hazard had three blocks each, while Hannah Stevenson had four. And Tana Arlovero had 25 digs. So consistently around the board, we're doing a better job. Our lineup seems a little more cohesive and I think we can keep that kind of rolling and I think this is the lineup that is going to be it for us if we can keep that rolling and continue to be a great team then we're going to have a lot more So I, I, I want to thank you for if you did come to our game on Friday and Saturday for coming because I think that was a big difference maker for us and it was a lot of fun to see the support that we have and hopefully we continue to see you at our home games next weekend when we play some very tough competition. Thank you. Oh, come on. There's got to be some questions. Okay, thank you. Not much to question when you're just winning. So good. Right on. Uh, I'm going to reiterate what Coach was saying. If you were not at our volleyball matches this past weekend, you missed it because it was fantastic. The atmosphere was electric. It was awesome. It was fun. I highly encourage you to get out there to our volleyball matches. It is just a blast of a time. Speaking of a blast, cross country went down to our rival, one of our rivals, Kevin Chadron, and you know, kind of laid it down a little bit. So, Steve, will you please come tell us about last weekend? Yeah, so we got a chance to go down to Shattery, and uh, I'm going to talk about the women's race first. The women uh, had a good day. We we had uh, the race didn't quite go the way that we wanted to at home the week before. It was it was solid, but uh, this last weekend we did a much much better job of what we're capable of. Uh, we had uh, two out of our three returners that uh, had personal bests on this course. Um, when you're looking at cross country times, you can't really compare times from one course to another because they're all built so differently. But uh, so to have a, a personal best on on the same course at the same time of year is is something that's really exciting for us right now. And then our third returner, our our lone senior, uh, actually exactly equaled her time from the year before, uh, down to the second. So. Uh, so that was really good. She actually uh, moved up quite a bit. She was that was Erica Westerman, and Erica was sitting. Uh, she was odd man out behind Shatteron's, uh top six a week earlier, 
and she finished right behind their third. She just got beat out on a kick at the end. And uh, so we managed to put, uh, put two inside of their top four uh, this past weekend on the women's side. And then uh, Laramie Giles was our, number, was our number three. She was just outside of their top seven. Uh, was, was tailing her the entire race and just couldn't quite get it done. Uh, Laramie, if it's a flat course, Laramie has her, uh, no doubt. And so it's just one of those that as we keep going through the season, we'll keep getting stronger. We saw Mrs. Margaret Thompson here. Margaret's basically been Laramie's shadow through the, through the fall here. Um, whatever Laramie does, Margaret's right there behind her. And so we just got to get her a little more confident to run up next to her. And that's going to make the two of, them, two of them a lot better as a whole. So we're real happy with what the, what the women were able to get done. And then, um, then the men got to go. Uh, and with the men, we had some things that we were trying to get done this weekend. We knew going up against Shatter the week before that we had a chance to, to try to win the meet. And so my challenge to them wasn't just to win the meet, but was to win the meet in a big fashion. And so our goals in cross country, a perfect score is 15 points. That means that you got all five of your runners in the top five spots. I gave them a little bit of grace on that. I told them to shoot for 20 or less. They scored exactly 20 points. Uh, and we were hoping Ryan would be able to get the win. That would have put us under 20, but uh, unfortunately he got a little bit gassed on, uh, on the hills there. And uh, that's okay. He's a freshman. The guy that beat him has run that course a lot. Uh, and so he still ran a really, really strong race. And, uh, and never let, never gave the guy another inch after after a break going up the big hill on the backside of that course. Uh, so the other things that we wanted to try and do on this course, we wanted to separate their their first and second runners with a couple more guys. Um, we didn't get anybody in between their first and second the week before. We wanted to get, we wanted to see if we could get all of our scores in before their number three uh, as well. And then we wanted to make sure that we were running in packs throughout the race. Well, separating one and two, we put six in there. Seven before their number three, we actually had eight. Our eighth in before their number three. And we missed the nine, our ninth guy missed it by six seconds. He actually followed him up the hill to the finish. It's 200 meters to a downhill finish. And the guy just managed to, to get going before he got there. So uh, really, really saw our guys running well. We were real happy with the way that they came through and, and took care of that race. Uh, we actually ran this meet. We did all this without our number two from the week before. We opted to hold him out for a week uh, just to, to give him a little extra time to recover. And so uh, that, to me, made it that much more impressive what we were able to do. We had four out of our top five were freshmen, five out of the top seven, in fact, were freshmen. And of the two that weren't freshmen, one's a sophomore, one's a junior. So that gives us a lot of, a lot of promise, a lot of hope for where we're going with this season and where, where we're going in the future. Questions? All right, thank you. This past weekend, I'm very proud. Are you guys proud of the Rockers or what? The subway must be great because it's totally rolling. Everybody is just quiet as a dog today. So, hey, thank you everybody for being here. We very much appreciate your tangible support. We appreciate you coming out to our events. We appreciate the uh, monetary support also. You can always continue to do that at hardrockclub.org backslash give. Um, <clears throat> this uh, week, do not forget that we've got soccer on Friday night at 6 o'clock p.m out at um, Sioux Park against Colorado Mines. And on Saturday, we have our homecoming football game against Simon Frazier kicking off at 5 o'clock. Uh, thank you again to Subway, because you obviously did a great job for us today. Thank you to Brad Bloom and Michelle Chickas for all your guys' help. And um, again, we will see you next week. The, the um, uh, lunch of next week will be at Pizza Ranch South at 11.30 a.m. That's down on East Stumer Road by the new Walmart. So we will see you then. Thank you.